Hi, I'm Dave with one adventure at a time. We've been living full time in our ProMaster for two years. And if you've been following our journey, you know that I love the snow. Last winter or last summer, we installed a propane heater that did okay job, but not good enough. But I'm excited to announce we are doing possibly the biggest upgrade that we have ever done on our van, the most complex. And we do have a friend that's gonna help us with this project. I'm looking forward to getting it started and getting it installed. I'm not going to be doing a how-to video on this one because it's a huge complex install and it would take us a week just to film it. I think it's gonna take us three days to install it without the filming alone. We are installing a Wabasto heater. Yay! Mm. I'm very excited about this project because it's going to give us a lot more flexibility than we've ever had before. We're not going to have to run to the warmer temperatures. We're going to be able to stay, watch it snow a little bit, really enjoy our lifestyle. So this is a big one for us. And mom's going to be happy that we have an externally vented heater. Yeah, and this is going to be a <laughs> lot safer heater. This is going to uh, tap into the fuel tank. And hopefully it's going to have a thermostat on it, a control knob. It's going to be quite deluxe. And um, we're going to show you in this video how the most complicated parts, how we're going to install it and not do the how-to video. But we're going to show you some of the highlights and some of the stuff that's going to make this job easier for us. And some of the tips and tricks. And some tips and tricks. So let's open up the box. Let's open up that box. And see what we have. Where did this come from? This came from London and we ordered it. It shipped free Federal Express all the way to Wyoming, United States in three days. Yeah, and we ordered this off of heatso.com. Oh. Well, Look at that. There's the heater. Ooh, it's heavy. Super heavy. We are going to be drilling seven holes in the floor of the van to install That's this. That's scary. Is uh, it taped down? Yeah, it's stuck to the bottom. It, as you can tell, it's quite involved. So we're gonna take it all out of the box. Look what we have. Start getting some tools and supplies together. And get, get our reinforcement. Yeah, get some help and start getting it going. Not only do we have this box, but we also have all these parts over here. Not to mention all the tools that it's going to take to do this job. <laughs> oh. This is a big job. This is huge. We are not professionals and this job does come with some risk because we are messing with the fuel tank. So if you have any doubt whatsoever, please consult a professional or have a professional do this install. We are just going to show you some of the highlights here. We're going to use as much safety as we can. The first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery and then we're going to wait about 20 minutes and then we're going to unhook the airbag so we don't set the airbags off. That way we can completely take this front seat out and we're going to mount this thing just a little bit differently than a lot of people do. And we'll show you that when we get there. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, I got this. A lot of people, when they mount these, they'll mount them so they're underneath the seat, but they're facing this direction. And we opted to mount ours to face this way. And then we're going to run the hose and have it go directly to the middle section of our van. That way we get the heat a little more efficiently all the way to the back. And if you look at the bottom here, here's the seven holes that we're drilling. You got the two big one inch ones, and then we got the five sixteenths inch holes here. So we're gonna drill out all seven of these. And because we're not using the mounting plate, the mounting plate, you have to drill a five inch hole. So it's just one big giant hole. And then you have to fill up that whole gap so you don't get a draft up through there. So we're not gonna need the mounting plate. We're not going to have a big giant hole there. Right now we're using, this is the rubber gasket that goes right over these and fits on there solidly. So we're using this 
for a template and then we just mark the holes. So this is gonna make it really easy to make sure everything's in the right place. And then we just gotta stay clear of that wire harness. And there's a wire harness that runs right here. We already marked it. We know we need to stay clear of that. I will be going underneath the van just to make sure that we don't hit anything that we shouldn't. There is a heat shield underneath the van that I will have to remove so I can get the bolts on the bottom of this. Sounds simple enough, right? Gosh, we don't make these vehicles out of anything. I thought it'd be a lot harder than that. No, it's stupid easy. I thought it would have been too. All right, so we just gotta get the whole saw out. All right, so now we remove the foam around the holes that we drilled. And then if we're not exact, we might have to file it just a little bit or maybe it'll slip right in there the first time. We'll see. Dave, using a very important tool. A uh, steak knife. Or one and only <laughs> steak knife. It's a little messy. Don't get those metal shavings in your fingers. Now you're taking all the fun out of it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, a muffler? That we see? Yeah, that is the muffler. All right, what have we got done so far? We got the holes all cut in, everything fits good, so we're just gonna use some primer and make sure we don't get any rust on that bare metal. And then we're going to put a layer of silicone on the floorboard just so it sets in there nice and tight. And I'll go underneath. I'll also use some primer and some silicone. And we're pretty much ready to bolt it on. Really? Yeah. That's too easy. I know. Ready to bolt it to the floor. All right. Do we need to tape these so we don't get anything on those? No, I'll get them. Yeah. Does that look like it? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, we're in. I mean, we were in Oz without, without much of a problem. The other way that you could do it is I noticed just now on the on our heat heat shield, you, yeah. know, you could run this to run like one right forward there. and one back. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you could do that, like right, even maybe like right, yeah, like feel, that. I feel good about that. You know, because you got your two bolts here for the heat yeah. shield, and I think this would slide right by it. Yeah, I like running one forward and one back. Yeah, you want to try that? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm underneath the van right now. And if you look up here, this is the exhaust. And this hose coming out is the intake. And we've got them going in opposite directions. So we're not sucking up exhaust with the fresh air. And right behind the intake hose, this is the fuel line. And the fuel line hooks up to this nipple on the bottom of the Basto heater. And one tip is for that is if you're using lots of silicone, make sure that you put a little piece of tape on the end of the nipple when you stick it through so it doesn't fill full of silicone. And then we hook the fuel line up to it and we're running that. And if you look behind me here, right up in here, you can see where we installed the fuel pump. 
and it's tucked in there nicely and that bracket is already provided all we had to do was stick the clamp right onto that bracket it is a little tight to get up in there but it's nice and hidden and protected it's right uh, behind the fuel tank itself and then uh, right now we're still working with the fuel line and we've got it tucked up on top of the fuel tank that will help protect it from any heat and the fuel line here is all going to be protected by the heat shield that we took out we're going to put that back in and all this will be protected by that heat shield so we've got a pretty good start so right here beside the driver's seat is a panel we took the panel off and Which this, we call the squishy step squishy step and this is the top of the fuel tank and if you'll notice right here, this is a cap for one of the nipples. And this is actually a fuel rod that goes into the tank that's already in here. And if it wasn't for this, I would not have even tried this job. Because the Webasto kit comes with its own fuel rod. And there's no way I would feel comfortable putting this in myself. So I'm very happy that one of our subscribers gave us a part number for a piece that clamps right on to that nipple. And they will go ahead, Carrie will list that part number for you guys if you wanna actually do this like we did it and we got this ahead of time and made this job super easy. So all you have to do is remove this cap and then put this new one on. And this is a quick connector fuel adapter and it snaps right on, make sure it's pushed in, and that's it. Now we can hook a fuel line right up to it. No drop in the gas tank. Yeah, no dropping the gas tank down, no making your own tap. No drilling in the tank. No drilling any holes, so I'm super happy that the Pro Masters already came with this. And I really appreciate the part number that we were given to be able to do this job. A couple of things that made this job a lot easier are these two parts. And one is the quick connector that went right onto the nipple. And the other is this adapter here. And this is actually a reducer. I think it goes from a quarter inch down to an eighth of an inch. And it's an elbow. So this little piece. And this here is some lawnmower quarter inch tubing that we bought that you can buy at any hardware store. So we use just a couple inch piece of this and it goes right onto the nipple, connects onto here, and then this part connects onto the other side. And then we can use the regular um, gas, line. gas line that it comes with it. And you can see that I've got it all attached right here. So it's nice and neat. And then we'll just hook up the gas line here and go directly to the pump, and that part's done. Is it working? Yeah, I hear the pump, the pump pumping. Mm. We've got a readout on our digital. So we got power? I hear the fan. We have power, we got fan. Oh, look at that. We got it going the right direction. That's good. <laughs> here oh. Oh, there it is. That's it. it. That is it. Damn, <laughs> look at that. We have fire us up. Hot? We got heat in August. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll be ready. Ready for some snow. I'm ready. That's cold. We're staying in Canada and up for now on. <laughs> Canada and north. <laughs> Canada and north. We're ready for the beet harvest. Yeah. Bill here had just done an install, a Vasto install in his van just a few months back. And he volunteered to help us do ours. Mm -hmm. And I was, how long did it take you to do yours the first time? Uh, it took about two to three days to really polish it up. Cause it was a lot of uh, trial and error that I had to do. Cause I wasn't sure like exactly how to do it, but I love to figure those things out. So it was kind of like hit or miss yeah. and and that's what I've heard too. It's going to take two to three solid days to get it the first time. Mm -hmm. So having Bill's experience and help on this, we were able to install ours in about six hours and have it working. 
and then all the finish yeah. work and making it look nice and getting everything tucked away was about two days. Yeah, it was really nice to install it this time around because we could avoid the mistakes that I made the first time around, you know? Yeah, like just an example is the heat shield that's right underneath the passenger seat. The, underneath the vehicle, it, it took me the first time to get that thing off and then back on again, Was it took a little over an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you get to do that a few times, you get pretty quick at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably the biggest pain out of the whole project. Yeah. The heat shield's the biggest pain. Yeah, yeah, actually, I thought it was it was super challenging to get that off and then back on again. What about drilling holes in the bottom of the van? Drilling the holes in the bottom of the van was super easy. The way Bill had us do it was we just traced it out on the floor mat from the gasket that came with the kit and drilled the hole straight in from there. And super that whole part of the job probably took 10 minutes and it was now, done. Mm. Why did you do it that way instead of the face plate that comes you can order? So uh, the reason why we did it this way is we didn't have to buy any kind of mounting kit and we didn't have to drill that giant hole that you've seen some people drill out in the bottom of their van. Yeah. And then you gotta fill that hole because you're gonna get cold air in there, you're gonna get mice in there, but we just had to drill just big enough hole holes to fit the Webasto heater right into. Yeah, it is so painful to bring yourself to be able to drill like a four or five inch hole in the floor of your van. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> and we didn't have to do that. Yeah, no. So for somebody who's thinking about installing a heater themselves, what do they need to know or what experience would you suggest that they have? Um, I would suggest that it, you have s at least some mechanical experience and experience working with fuel lines and stuff. Cause if you don't feel comfortable with working with gas, then you might make a mistake due to the nervous energies that you get. Yeah, you gotta be careful working with gas. That's when big problems can happen. But also mm. I have very limited electrical experience and that's where Bill really came in and helped out where he has quite a bit. And I would have really, without Bill, I would not have been able to hook it all up the way we did it. Yeah, I have a lot of fun with electrical work. Electrical work and electronics, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> So it was fun for me. And because of that, we got a switch that goes from the vehicle battery or we can switch it to the house battery to our goal zero and we can run that heater off either way we want to. And our last question is, we need to figure out how to uh, set the altitude adjustment, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> so there, I guess there's a rheostat that we have to buy and then we can uh, hook that up and we can set it so we can run it above 5,000 feet because right now, it's not advised to run it above 5,000 feet because it can gum up the inside of the, uh, the Webasto heater itself and cause it to fail. Yeah, I gotta look into that too. Cause that's, yeah, that's got me going a little bit. I had no idea until these guys told me about it. And we so, didn't know until we heard from a patron about it and we really appreciated that information cause we don't wanna, we don't wanna break it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> or clean it. <laughs> like that just looks like yeah, a pain to yeah, clean. Yeah. Bill, we thank you so much for helping us install that. That is a huge upgrade for us. Yeah, thank oh. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Thanks for letting me help. That was fun. One of my favorite things about this whole build is this switch right here. And this is a double throw, double pull switch. And what that allows us to do is we can run this heater off the vehicle battery or we can switch it to the down position and run it off the house battery, which is our goal zero. Now this is where Bill really came in and thrived because I would have struggled. There are six prongs on the back of this switch, which was confusing for me. But it turned out it was pretty simple. Bill hooked up the Webasto heater to the two central switches. And then the top switch is hooked up to our gold zero. And then the bottom, if you go down all the way to the bottom position, that switched to the vehicle. So that's where all the wires went. It made it look easy when Bill was showing me how to do it and it's very nice to have this switch very nice to have somebody help us who knows and electrical somebody that actually knows what they're doing is helping us do it that we're not gonna need i don't think i think that's the tap for the fuel tank Is the exhaust. 
That was longer than that. This is the silencer. Oh, cool. All right, so that's wiring for the thermostat and the controller. Let's leave that. This is um, the controller. Is. This is the fuel line. Wow, it's tiny. Wow, they gave you all the pieces. Little brother. Wow. I don't know if there's enough pieces. There's the fuel pump. Ooh, it's heavy. And there's the big deal. Should be a gasket right here. Smaller than I thought it would be. Oh, there's the casket. So that's what we'll use for a template. Good. That's it? That's it. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. Or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.